Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White and today's lesson is on heat and enthalpy. We'll talk about the equivalence of work, heat, and energy and how you can interconvert those things. We'll talk about thermodynamic systems, open systems, and closed systems, and isolated systems. And then we'll talk about the first law of thermodynamics, which gives us an entree into treating heat and work in the context of thermodynamics. We'll talk about thermodynamic state functions and what they are. And we'll talk about energy, enthalpy, and heat capacity as ways of measuring the energy and heat of systems at constant volume and constant pressure. So there are many different forms of energy and we're familiar with kinetic energy as being one half times the mass times the velocity squared or potential energy for example gravitational potential energy is just the mass of an object times the gravitational uh, acceleration times the height of an object above some arbitrary reference point. Uh, we're familiar with heat energy as energy that's randomly distributed as both kinetic and potential energy of all the atoms and molecules of a system and the the amount of heat that's added to a system is equal to its heat capacity times the temperature change. And work energy is energy that's added to a system as a result of an external force acting through a distance. So for example, we can accelerate uh, a, uh, an object or we can compress an object and change its volume. And so work would be equal to the pressure times the change in volume. So let's look at energy conversions for a moment and we'll take the example of hydroelectric power. There's a lot of gravitational energy of water above the bottom of a dam. Here uh, is uh, the Hoover Dam for example. Uh, that gravitational energy can be converted into kinetic energy. The easiest way to observe this is through a waterfall where water uh, falls off the edge and then is accelerated by gravity. The same sort of thing happens at the bottom of a dam except it's a little bit less obvious how that happens. Finally, we can use a turbine to convert that kinetic energy of the water into electrical energy. Uh, and uh, we can send that electrical energy out onto uh, wires to your home. When it gets to your home, you can use that electrical energy to generate heat and light in a light bulb, for example. Overall, the total amount of energy is conserved, and the final amount of heat energy that's uh, developed by the lamp uh, when the light strikes the objects in your home, plus all of the heat energy that's, con uh, that's generated through inefficiencies in the general states of uh, conversion along the way, all that heat energy is equal to the original amount of gravitational potential, of, uh, potential energy of the water above the dam. So let's now take uh, a look at thermodynamic systems. A thermodynamic system is just uh, any matter that's of interest to us. Everything else is called the surroundings. So as chemists, we're usually interested in uh, chemical systems that are undergoing some chemical reaction. Uh, and then the surroundings would be the laboratory and the uh, earth, everything around us. Open systems exchange mass, matter, and energy with the surroundings. So for example, uh, a dish of water uh, allows water to evaporate and go into the surroundings. And so that would be an example of an open system. A closed system uh, can exchange only energy with the surroundings. So if you had a closed vessel, a, a glass or metal box uh, with gas inside or liquid inside, that would be an example of a closed system that cannot exchange um, mass, but does exchange energy if the system is not thermally insulated. Isolated systems have rigid impenetrable boundaries uh, and so they are thermally insulated as well. So they uh, don't allow work to be done on the system because they're rigid. They don't allow heat to be added to the system uh, because they um, are thermally insulating and uh, they don't allow mass to be exchanged because they're impenetrable. So the first law of thermodynamics is really simple. It says delta Q is equal to Q plus W. And in words, that means that the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the amount of heat added to the system plus the amount of work that's done on the system. Now, you have to be a little bit careful because some textbooks, particularly engineering textbooks, define W with the opposite sign. And that's usually because they're interested in heat engines that are doing work on the surroundings rather than uh, doing work on the system. In engineering type texts, the first law would be presented as delta, delta U is equal to Q minus W because you're talking about work that's being done by the system on the surroundings uh, instead of 
um, by the surroundings on the system. As chemists, we're usually interested in uh, the version uh, Q plus W because we're usually interested in doing work uh, on the system from the surroundings. A thermodynamic state function is a property that is characteristic of a system at any given instant in time, and it's not dependent on the history of the system. So, for example, if you have uh, a a chunk of metal, one of uh, the properties of the metal would be temperature, another would be volume, mass, pressure. Uh, those are simple examples of uh, properties that, are ca that characterize a system uh, but are not dependent on the history of the system. So it doesn't matter uh, where the metal bar has been in the past, its temperature is something that you measure right now. Uh, internal energy is a state function, and so you can actually calculate the internal energy from other thermodynamic functions uh, of, the, of the system. There are less intuitive state functions like enthalpy, entropy, and Gibbs free energy, which we'll can encounter in future lectures. So let's talk about energy and enthalpy. And for a moment, let's consider only PV work or pressure volume work. If we compress a system, uh, then we do work on it, and the amount of work that we do is equal to minus P times delta V. Now this is using the chemist's uh, version, so if we compress something, delta V uh, changes in a negative way, and when you multiply by pressure and then change the sign, that work would have a positive um, algebraic sign. And so the first law of thermodynamics becomes uh, delta U is equal to Q minus P delta V. Now at constant volume, delta V is equal to zero, and delta U is just equal to uh, the heat added at constant volume. We call that QV. Under pr constant pressure conditions, it's convenient to define a new state function, enthalpy, and enthalpy is equal to U plus PV. So the change in enthalpy, delta H, is going to be equal to delta U plus P delta V, and if we now substitute in our definition for delta U, we find that uh, the P delta V terms cancel, and this is just Q, the heat added at constant pressure. So under constant volume conditions, the amount of heat added is equal to delta U. Uh, under constant pressure conditions, the amount of heat added is equal to delta H. That's why we invented this uh, delta H definition. Okay, heat capacity is, de is defined as the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of, uh, of a specified amount of substance by one degree, usually kelvins. This can be done in a calorimeter at constant volume or at constant pressure. It's actually more common to do it at constant pressure, but you can do gases at constant volume pretty easily. So calorimetry provides a convenient way to measure changes in either internal energy or enthalpy. So uh, for internal energy, if you do a calorimeter at constant volume, then you would integrate uh, the heat capacity over a temperature change from T1 to T2, and that would be um, your delta U for the system. For a constant pressure calorimeter, you would do that same integration of the heat capacity at constant pressure, which you'd measure with the calorimeter, over some uh, temperature interval T1 to T2, and that would be the delta H for the system. Next time, we'll talk about enthalpy changes in chemical reactions and how to use thermodynamic tables to calculate them.